Get, 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 get low when the whistle go. How I love a dude bro car. Never drove a new Mopar. Blame it on my STI, baby. Oh, you waited for this. Oh, 2004 Subaru WRX STI. Two chicken breasts serve as buns for a light spread of peanut butter and a sprinkling of one-a-day vitamins. It's called the Gainswitch Jr. STI. STI stands for... See tits immediately. Super turbo impeller. Slam tates. I. Successful troll is. Sexually transmitted infection. Subaru Technica International. Subaru trying ineptly. Scum type individual. Subaru WRX STI. This car is a bar that only plays Africa by Toto. The bartender sings along but doesn't know the words. He holds open mic nights, but performers are only allowed to sing Africa. But he's never been to Africa or to a Toto concert, and he has no intention of going. He just likes the song because it reminds him of Grand Theft Auto Vice City. His name is probably Randy or something, and to Randy, the question, do you even lift, is not rhetorical. The STI features the 2.5 liter 4 cylinder engine with double cams. We're going to get to this engine later on, so hang, you know, ha hang tight. And right now it's at 126,000 miles. This WRX STI is now once again making stock power. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. This is an example. This STI right here is an example of an owner taking it back to stock after a WRX STI has been mutilated. It still has aftermarket stuff on it. It has suspension, exhaust, along with a completely rebuilt engine, taken back to stock, since Ethan bought this car off of a 19-year-old because, of course, the previous owner was not... Wait a minute. He's 19... The previous owner was 19 and he owned an STI? How rich are his parents? At least according to Pennsylvania standards. The STI is the top-of-the-line WRX. There's no level higher than that. So what's a 19-year-old doing with an STI? Which means one of two things. Either his parents helped him buy it all by himself, or he couldn't have had a good job because if he's dumb enough to just wreck an STI like that with tasteless mods, so he couldn't have had that great of a job, unless his parents got him one, which comes back to the rich parents argument, or he found one that someone else mutilated more and got it for real cheap. Or it could be just a tragic story of that he always wanted an STI, so he worked a crap load of jobs to get one, and then mutilated it. Uh. Anyway, in perfect 19-year-old fashion, he completely overdid the mods that he put on there. Like an aftermarket racing clutch, which makes the car undrivable. An engine and exhaust mods that nearly left the vehicle unusable when Ethan finally bought it. So Ethan had to spend money to undo all of the stuff this 19-year-old previous owner did. It's kind of like my old second gen neon i used to have oh god i mean when you're young you do gaudy over the top stuff to your car because it's probably your first car and you need to imprint your own persona on it somehow because you're gonna be damned if you're gonna have just a regular car but that's another thing about stis stis are the people who the people who get stis when they're young they're the people who gotta win i'm a, I'm a winner i'm not gay if i don't have the best car no one's gonna respect me it's the classic youth american tragedy dumping one thing when you find something better how's that for an obscure literature reference i mean but what else were we supposed to do when we were 19 because Gran Turismo 1 came out, and for a lot of us, that was the introduction to modding culture. Because in the game, the stock parts are the worst parts. A stock car is always the slowest car, and drives the worst. In Gran Turismo 1, no matter what you do to the car, it gets better. But real life doesn't work that way. But we hadn't figured that out yet back then. Oh, light and flywheel, J.C. Whitney, twenty dollars. Uh, I'm gonna put a light and flywheel on. Hey, why does my air conditioning not work? And what's that weird sound? Man, I was such an asshole. Subaru Impreza WRX STI, the automotive equivalent of a pickup artist. He is a dentist system of his own, and it works 30% of the time every time. It's the WRX system. Check out this outline. I mean, look at this damn thing. It's got a bigger spoiler than the end of the sixth sense. This is a car for the guy who's ever owned only one version of Microsoft Word, the pirated kind. And yet, the STI 
has a huge fan base. And I can see why. But even WRX STI enthusiasts can't really ignore some of the problems the brand has faced over the years, particularly for this generation. For instance, in 2011, there was a co there was a recall for all 2002 through 2007 Imprezas sold or registered in a salt belt state. This means that there were recalls for any 02 to 07 Imprezas sold in Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Maine. Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and the District of Columbia. This is because excessive corrosion led to the right or lower left control arm failing. Yes, the STIs are cars built for performance, but they're not really built to weather the elements in the same way as something like a Forester will. The interior has seats. Uh, yeah. It's not exactly what you'd call impressive from the appearance of stake, but then it really doesn't have to be for the segment of consumers looking to get something zippier than the standard wagon or sedan. This aftermarket screen is a disc player, radio, and a clock all in one. Ooh. Since the original North American STIs didn't have a radio or anything of the sort. See, Subaru was looking to keep costs and curb weight down, so they made radios a $1,000 option on STIs. But since consumers aren't always as stupid as the auto industry likes to think, hardly anybody got that option. But back to the styling. I know, I'm beating a dead horse here, but come on, look at this thing. It's got a bigger wing than Sephiroth at the end. Its body style is like a sports sneaker from the mid 90s, the kind you get shot over, with an identity that's flimsier than a husband's excuse to see his mistress. Back to the engine. 2004 was the first year for the EJ257 in the North American market, making 300 horsepower at the crank, and all the STI guys will insist that every single one of those horsepowers makes it through the differential and into the wheels. Right? My STI makes 300 horsepower. Now, the owner is taking it back to stock as much as he can because this car rides like ass. Oh man, you ever fly in an Embraer commuter regional jet? You know, the ones with two seats on one side of the aisle and one row of seats on the other? That. You know how the overhead bins rattle and, oh, if you go into that Quasimodo bathroom, the, the coach work of the bathroom is vibrating like an Xbox 360 controller? That. All right, I knew the STI was going to be cheap, but I didn't know it was the same quality as a base Impreza. I'm driving it and every plastic trim piece inside on this second gen STI is just going ballistic. The seats are good. I mean, they're different. They're different than base. They're not Recar or anything. They're Subaru's own design, but the body still shakes them like crazy. Hmm. Okay, the motor. The reason you have the STI. 2.5 turbo, double cams, and now that the owner removed the previous 19 year old's shouty bro off valve, the engine sounds like it should. It's smooth. It, it, this is the thing you need to understand about the STI now that this one is almost close to being stock again. Very smooth, very limited linear power band. There is no crazy jumps in the middle of it, no crazy surge when the turbo comes on. That's a result of modding culture. You get one of these things as close to stock, it's pleasant to drive. The engine is fine. Most of your torque is going to come on at 4,000 RPM, but it will rev easily and smoothly without hiccups all the way to 7,000. The Dodge Neon SRT4 is crazier than this car, and the Evo 9 is crazier than an STI. Compared to those two things, an STI is downright civilized. I wish we could have had crazier back roads to work with, because then I could see what this thing would do, but I was aware I was driving an STI. I'm driving the cream of the crop here. And I'm aware that people are looking at me with that rear wing. I mean, I've done double takes on STIs and thought, oh, why did he put that weird, weird wing on the back of the car? Who is he? Oh no, that's Subaru's rear wing. And it's high, yeah, but the top of that wing is still right in your visual, visual, ugh. I mean, if I had one of these things, I'd get a rear deck from something else, from some other Impreza, paint it the same color, or hopefully find it as the same color, and just put that on. Wing delete. I don't need that. I don't need that wing. The shifter is okay. <sighs> Little bit sloppier than I thought it would be. I remember when I drove that Honda Del Sol in Florida. That was a nice stick shift. That was, that was a better switch gear. That felt better than this. 
you're not going to be doing burnouts in this. Nope. All wheel drive all the time. And that's why, you know, WRX and STI's clutches are always burning out because 19 year olds think you can spin the wheels on these things. And yes, you can. And when you do, you hurt the car. <laughs> You're filling up with 93 all the time because uh, that's what it needs. So owning one of these things isn't going to be cheap, and the mileage isn't great. If you do 20 miles per gallon on this, you're, uh, you're doing good. You're doing real good. But a lot of you guys want these things. And the, the reason you want them is because they say STI on here. There are better bang for your buck little everyday racers. There are better ones than this. I mean, as far as power goes, you're going to get a much better deal with a Honda Accord V6 in manual. Yep. On the other side, you have a huge fan base that'll keep this car running, and there are a lot of aftermarket parts and replacement parts that you can use. And certainly, there's clubs you can join, and any issue these cars have had have been solved. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't mess with with this car was that intercooler sprayer. The owner says, hey, you can press it if you want, it makes some noise, but it doesn't really feel like the car's going any faster. I mean, granted, we're driving this thing in wintertime, so what do you want? But he said he's pressed that thing, it's like, ah, I guess it does something, but what it does, I don't know. Yeah, okay, cool your intake charge. I think it's just there to be fun. You know, just like a gimmick. Oh, I'm gonna track day, bro, here. They like, all right, all right, yeah, all right. All right. Spray your Reno cooler. Very nice. But that's the thing. I kept comparing this thing to the Dodge Neon SRT4, and it's not as entertaining as the SRT4, and it's not as entertaining as an Evo 9. I'm sure I'm just going as fast, but it's like going fast on an airliner. You don't really feel it, which makes sense why people mod these things and make them worse and louder, because they want to feel it going faster. Yeah. You're short ram intakes. You know what? Let's play devil's advocate here. Let's make an argument that no one is really making the STI for STI guys. So then why is the WRX STI popular? All right. It's an affordable car relative to other models that push performance as their brand. It's also relentlessly customizable and reliable in ways that many cars in its price range are unable to be. I'm looking at you, Evo 9, and it can be fun to drive if this is the type of ride you're looking for. Have I driven better cars in this price range? Sure. Stock Corvette C6. Okay, I know that's not a direct comparison because a Subaru STI is a turbocharged car with all-wheel drive, and a Corvette C6 is a naturally aspirated LS motor with rear-wheel drive. Oh, gosh, but as far as, like, crazy... Yeah, you can, you can soup up your STI to be faster, and you're still going to lose to a bone stock C6. But there's something to be said for the artful stupidity of the WRX STIs. Because it's not overly complex in its madness. It's Sonic the Hedgehog, gotta go fast. Chili dogs and whatnot. That's the beginning and end of that narrative. And such as it is with the STI. It's a car that everybody knows what it is and what it's about. Seriously, throw out all of the preconceived notions and meet a WRX STI on its own terms and you'll enjoy it more than you thought. Sure, it's hard to separate a car from its connotations in the same way people can't listen to lost profits anymore without thinking about the unpleasantness. It all goes back to the larger issue at work here. Is understanding possible without acceptance? Say that again. Is understanding possible without acceptance? Can you understand and enjoy a Subaru WRX STI without casting aside any ingrained prejudices and accepting that this is a car that appeals to a lot of people? Because if you can't open your mind to a car like this, it's unlikely you'll ever truly accept it as anything other than a turbocharged can of Axe body spray. There's a very large chasm between acceptance and understanding, and we can't always bridge that distance. It's like Homer Simpson jumping Springfield Gorge. We might make it halfway there, but our own biases about cars and the people who drive them run the risk of sending us tumbling right back down over the rocks. And hey, maybe we'll eventually find out that our biases bear out. But can't we still just accept that we've met another person who loves cars too? Sure, some stereotypes are true. Sometimes the glove just fits. But just because the glove fits doesn't mean you can't still shake the hand that's wearing it. It's gonna take a lot to give up my dog, Rx. There's nothing you can give.
you get all the more except for sex. I love the games on my STI. Gonna take some time to do the mods I never had.